Welcome to the introduction of what is new in PhotoMagic 04. As we can see, the general user interface is very familiar to everyone who used PhotoMagic before, but there is a lot to discover. So the basic functions, like selecting images, adding them to the storyboard, adding audio, for example, that is just the way it used to be before. But one of the main new features is the timeline. The timeline gives a visual representation of duration of the slides and compared to duration of the audio. So in the storyboard, every slide as it has is exactly the same size. And it doesn't matter whether it has it is 10 seconds or 5 seconds. In a timeline though, a 10 second slide is gonna be double as wide as a 5 second slide, of course. Another neat feature is that you can set a time scale. So if you need more space, you just turn the time scale down. If you want to have more accurate control, you zoom further in and from there you go. So you see an audio waveform and that is very handy because you can set transitions to match certain points in the audio. So one just has to grab a transition point and move it around. To make transitions even easier, we have in-place editing of audio markers. Audio markers tell PhotoMagico to advance to the next slide at a certain point in the audio. So let's just add an audio marker at, well, let's say this point here. I right click and select audio marker add. If I change this to continue at audio marker right now, PhotoMagico will adjust this automatically. There's another way to add audio markers, simply by playing back the slideshow with the audio track selected. While I'm playing back the slideshow, I can press the M key to set audio markers. So let's hit play. As you can see, PhotoMagico set audio markers into the waveform and also set the continue type to add audio marker. That will make sure the transition always happens at these specific points in the audio track. You can also just drag the audio markers around to readjust them. That is very handy when you zoom in a little bit further and see that certain audio markers are just a little bit off. Then you just grab them, move them around and like this, adjust the timing to a perfect level. If you feel that an audio track should begin at another point in time, for example, or should end at another point in time, that can be done in place in the timeline now as well. So for example, let's go for the ending here and say, well, we want to cut off the ending. So we just grab the audio track at its end and, well, shorten it a little bit. The other thing we could do is we press the option key, grab the waveform itself and move it further to the left. You see the audio markers will stay at the points you defined beforehand, but like this you can make the audio shorter and you release it and that's it. What we also see is that yellow line in the audio. At the beginning it's fading in and of course at the end it's fading out like this fading of audio can be adjusted by itself. There is no linking to slides anymore. The vo volume of an audio track can also be set right inside the timeline itself. Just grab the line itself and adjust the level. If we go over to the options panel where we can also adjust both fade in, fade out and the volume, you'll see that those values will change when I move the yellow volume line. So if we now would add a second audio track, you can see we can fade one audio track out and the other one in, and like this we get a nice fade. Maybe we want to remove the very beginning because it's very silent here. So again we just move that over 
and let's control it for a second. So we have a nice cross dissolve just with a few clicks. Now we already saw that it's possible to add multiple audio tracks. The same thing is now also possible with, with video or images. So let me get another video or another image I should say and drag it on top of another image. And we will get a second layer in here. So we can move that around and even animate it in addition to the first one. So let's say I move that to the bottom. You'll see an animation of that image and a panning and zooming of the background image. This works with up to six layers per slide. So I can add, let's say, a third image. And two titles. So I add one title here. The other one here. And as you can see, we have now, well, we have now five elements. I can also expand and collapse the visual tracks. That saves space just in case I have, for example, a MacBook Air or another small screen. Like this, I can either have full control over all of my layers or a compact view. That also works for the audio track. And like this, it takes up as little space as, po as possible, still giving you all the control to select individual layers. The timing of each element can also be set individually. So, for example, I want the background image to come in first and then I want the two other images to follow. So I select the first the image I want to come right after the, the first image and I adjust the visibility. I maybe set it to fade in first so I get a nice fade in and do the same thing with the second image. Set it to fade in and set it like this a little bit. Now let's ch check that Now you saw that the binocular image came first and the river followed right away. Um, this can also be done with animation. You can time the animation over here and you will get indicators when transitions come in yellow and while the image is not yet visible. If you want to fine tune the position of one layer in the stage, you can press and hold the command key and then use the arrow keys just like in Photoshop to move an element around. Like this you have pixel precise control over where your images go. To separate the layers from each other each image or video can have its own border. So for example let's set this border to two points and two points and for example give it a white border around it and you will see, well, maybe we need a little bit more than two in that case due to the zoom level here. So we gave it a nice white border. And like this, it separates itself quite nicely from the background. Let's say we add a sixth title that we name, for example, opening title and make it really, really big. Then we might run into a problem. So for example, I'm putting that one over here and I want to move the image beneath. So once I click it I will always select the title above. This is where layer locking comes in very handy. If you go to the edit menu you will find lock layer selection. That means once you select a layer in the storyboard or timeline it will always stick to that layer so you can move it around no matter what else is in the foreground. That's also very handy if you have semi-transparent layers, what is also possible. So if I select this layer, I can only move this layer around and don't accidentally move other layers to places I don't want to move them. All the same is of course also possible in the storyboard. I can expand and collapse layers in case I have enough screen real estate, which is pretty hard right now 
with six uh, visual layers. So let me just remove three of them so you'll see that it is possible to have multiple layers around. As I mentioned before, also movies can be used together with images. So having a picture-in-picture -picture with a movie is not a problem at all. We can also do live color correction on a movie. So if we go to the options panel over here, so we can adjust the saturation on that movie a little bit to make it pop a little more. And if you play it back, you see that the color correction is applied in real time and there is no rendering required. If you're using really huge images, like for example this panorama, Photomagica will warn you that this image might take a little long to load and there is actually too much data to make sense. In that case, I'm only zoomed in 44% and already have my entire stage filled. Like this, I, I don't really need that amount of data. And Photomagica detects that and gives me the possibility to scale down either just that image or each image in the slideshow where it would, would make sense. So I tell Photomagica to scale down the image and that will scale it down so it fills 100% of, of the stage. Like this, the slideshow package gets way smaller and the performance during playback is much better than with very large images. We also added intelligent warnings. So for example, we have a warning triangle up here. It tells me that there is something wrong. For example, there is an audio marker missing at that point, so the slideshow will be stuck at this image. So what could, could we do? We could just change the continue type to a fixed timing. That solved the problem. Or let's go over to the timeline again, and let's adjust the transition here to 2 seconds, sorry, 2 seconds, not 20 seconds, and also adjust the slide duration to 2 seconds. What we will see is another warning triangle. Photomagica will tell us that the transition is as long as the slide itself. Like, like this, there won't be enough time to load the following image. So, there are two options we could choose from either increase the slide duration or decrease the transition duration. In that case, we increase the slide duration as two seconds might be a little bit short. And there we go. For the magic, it's enough time to load the following image and we won't run into a problem at this stage. If you want to replace an image in the storyboard or timeline, simply get the new image, drag it over the frame in the storyboard or timeline and for the magic automatically replaces the image itself. If you create similar slideshows over and over again, you can define placeholders to create templates. So let's say we have a starting title and we always want to have the possibility to replace those two images. So let's do a right click on the first one, select File and select Is Placeholder. Let's do the same thing with the other small image and from now on we can just grab any image drag it over the image in the stage and it will be replaced with a newly selected image. That makes, for instance, creating wedding slideshows a breeze. There is only one time where you actually have to create all the visual styles and the animations and from then on you just need to drag in the new photos, adjust a few titles and you might even be done within a few minutes. Once you're done with the slideshow there is of course sharing. Sharing and full screen playback is, is now unified in the sharing button. So you can either go to play full screen, select your screen and off you go, or you can share to different destinations. We decided to make sharing destination centric so the user always knows what kind of export to choose in order to get to what destination. So there is no need to know about the file specifications for iPhone, iPad or an Apple TV, just that you want to export for this specific destination and Photomagical will do the rest. That's it for the new features of Photomagical 4. If you have any questions, make sure you to come back to us and, and we will answer them as quick as possible. Have fun with Photomagical 4!